I work with a lot of beginners and as soon as we stand them here and show them that baseball bat and tee a ball up and have them stand there and just go back and run the club face to the ball, all of a sudden they're hitting it right where they want it to go. This video is for golfers who are not golfers yet, but hope to be. So if you've never picked up a golf club or if maybe you've done it a couple times but never really got into it, but you're looking to go further, we have the man for you here. Here's Mike Malaska. How's it going, Mike? Good, Brendan. How you doing, pal? Good. Good to see you. So uh, we're talking about people. So maybe they have like a, uh, a company tournament that they have not practiced for that's coming up soon. Or maybe they're like, okay, this is the summer. The kids are finally out of the house. And this is, I'm going to actually give golf a go. Okay. What do you tell to a brand new golfer? Well, first of all, we're talking about a stationary ball. And it's understanding some basic concepts. And you can get to where you can get it in front of you and hit it pretty solid pretty quickly if you don't get confused with a couple of things. Okay, so the first and most important thing is to understand that what we're trying to do is we're trying to hit this ball with this club face. Now, this is a big club face. So what are we trying to do? You're trying to run this club face into that ball on an angle and make it go the direction you want it to go. So that's basically what the game is, is it's face control. It's being able to control this face. If I want to hit it out this way, the face hits it that way. If I want to hit it straight, if I want to curve it this way. So this is where the game is played. It's played with the face. So how do we control the club face? Well, you control the club face with your hands. So here we've got a, there's a baseball bat. So if I was going at the camera, and this is how I perceived the game when I started. Yeah. So I didn't see this. It's not, this is not the bat. That is like an extension of your left arm. So the bat is the club face. So you've got this bat down there and you're gonna either hit the ball to right field or hit it to center field or hit it to left field. So you're controlling the bat with your hands. So the first thing people need to know is once they put their hands on the club, which we'll talk about in a minute, all we're doing is we're trying to control the club face to run the club face into the ball to make the ball go where you want it to go. Yeah. If you don't control the face, if you don't learn that first and you start with the big movement patterns of your body, it's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Because as soon as you start, the more you move, the more control you have to have of your hands to be able to square the club face on the ball and make the ball go where you want it to go. Yeah. So the first is educating your hands or training your hands how to use the face minimal amount of body motion and get face control. If they do that, they're going to start hitting some really good shots. If you come out and you just start moving your body and you think somehow the face is just going to automatically show up, it, it is, it's very difficult. So the first thing is how do we get, what are we focusing on, which is the face? What controls the face? Our hands. Now, how do you put your hands on the club? Great point, yeah. Probably the most important thing I could say to people, come on over here, Brett. Okay. So put your club down. All right, when all of you, when you go to take a hold of a golf club, the biggest mistake people make watching them in this game is they put the club way too much in the palm of their hands. When you get it in the palm of your hands, your wrists don't work correctly. Mm -hmm. So how do we get it more so in into the palm your... of the hands? You're, you mean like yeah, all so, this fat part so here? So it's right through. Yeah. They get it right in the middle of their hands this way. Either they turn yeah. them this way, but the club's in the palm of their hands. Mm -hmm. If you watch good players, the club is more in their fingers. It's predominantly in their fingers. Okay. But so if I held this up like this, and I said, all I want you to do is take a hold of that. Just grab it. Okay. It's going to go more into your fingers. Uh -huh. The reason is because the club head is above your hands. Yeah. So if people would just take, it wouldn't even matter if their grip was right, you just took a baseball grip. Yeah. That's fine, yeah. because if we, if we took that now, it's in your fingers, and we bench you to the ground, yeah. and you use the bat, you're gonna be pretty good. Yeah, like if it was monkey bars or something, and I was on it, I'd be like that. You're gonna grab. I'm, I'm not gonna be like you're that. You're not gonna right. grab it in the yeah. palm of your hands. Yeah. The biggest mistake people make with their grip is they don't, they don't feel this first. What they do is they put a club like this, mm -hmm. and then they try to put their hands oh, on right it, and it palm. goes right in the palm yeah, of their hands. it does. Okay, yeah. so relative to grip, it's put something up here mm -hmm. and just take a hold of it. Yeah. You're going to be pretty close. Mm -hmm. If you put it down here and you try to put your hands on it, you don't have the discipline you don't even know, and then people struggle getting their grip. Yeah, hopefully you can see that, guys. I mean, just naturally, I grab it, and it's all in it's, that. It's all up in the palm. palm of your hands. Right. So there you go. You take a hold of it. Mm -hmm. You put it down. You look at the face, 
and you start feeling the bat hit the ball. So there's right field, there's center field, Let's there's left field. Let's turn towards the camera, Mike. I'm just going to go this way so that... So, so that once you kind of get... It wouldn't even matter if you had a 10-finger baseball grip. Right. Well, what it matters is it's in your fingers. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much your hands are on there relative to the bat. So you didn't turn them way under or what? Because when we put it in front of you, you grip your hands pretty, for lack of a better term, neutral relative mm -hmm. to the face. So now you're sitting there and you're looking at it. Now all you're going to do is you, you want to go hit it to center field, hit it to left field, hit it to right field. Mm -hmm. And once you get this and you start feeling that, you can start making a little more swing and doing the same thing. And as long as you can control the face and run the face into the ball, you can hit some really good shots, even if you're a total beginner. Now, the other thing relative to beginners, yeah. people who are just starting, let me see the club again. The last thing you want to do is stand up here and start thinking about turn your body and shift your weight and all of those things. Right. Probably the best thing for somebody starting out is you do what we talked about with grip, you see the face, you drop this right foot back so it's out of the way. So now there's plenty of room for your arms to swing. Okay, so mm -hmm. I can stand here and I can just swing my arms back and down and there's no body getting in the way of my arm swing. Okay, now yeah. come up to the ball mm -hmm. and do that. And now just run the club face into the ball. Just with that much swing. Okay. It doesn't have to be much. Just run it into the ball. There you go. That's where most people need to start. Almost like I hit a ball before. <laughs> well, yeah. you have but that's it. simple. It's yeah. very simple because now you're not thinking about how do I turn my hips? How do I get out of the way? How do I shift my, because that's really at this point in time for most people, that's not important. And I think an important part of this too that we see here, that's off at little t. Yeah, well, you know. yeah, the other thing, almost everybody, even when I practice, when I start, yeah. it's always on a t. Because when you're learning the game, okay, here's what frustrates the heck out of most people. There's three things you have to get really good at. One is the angle of the face when it runs into the ball, which controls a lot of direction. Yeah. Two is the path that the club swings on. So is it swinging, is it swinging from in this direction? Is it swinging straight into the back of the ball? Or is it swinging on that angle? So the other one is path. Yeah. The last one is what they call angle of approach. Yeah. So the angle of approach is the ball's sitting here and your club comes down and where does your circle of your swing, where does it reach its low point? Right. Okay, that's the hardest one to get really good at. It's very fine, yeah. Okay, so that's a very high level skill. What people do is they come to this game and they put the ball on the ground and they try to hit it. I'm going, whoa, time out. Yeah. No, no, you got to get face and path control first, which yeah, you is see off the tee. Lots of fats and tops of the driving range. And they think and they're terrible. Just, yeah. Well, but see, what might have happened is your face angle might have been perfect and your path could have been perfect, but here's the ball and here's the ground. Your club hits the ground too soon, but the path and the face were good. So when it's on a tee, all of a sudden, if your path is or your angle of approach is a little off early or a little late, the ball still hits in the face. So you still see good feedback. Yeah. Good feet with path and face. Yeah. So again, this is a skill development game. The first two skills are path and face without the ground in play. Okay. You put the ground in play that quick, you know, see, you're going to get so frustrated because you're going to think, I'm no good. Well, no, no, you just made the game. You assumed a level of control that you don't have. Right. So you get frustrated. Now, here's the good thing about people who are just starting. You're going to go out and play. Now, unless you're playing in a tournament, you can tee it up every place. Nobody's going to care. Yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah. So tee it up everywhere. I mean, that's how when I started, we used to call them twisty lies. So what we would do when I was 12 or 13, we'd take the grass and we'd twist it so it made a tee, and then we'd stick the ball up on the grass. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because then we could get it in the air all the time. Yeah. You know, we didn't want to hit it off the ground and top it. Right. Okay, so don't bring the ground into play until you're ready. Mm -hmm. Even really good players, the better you get, people don't want to hit it off a tee. And I go, wait a minute, you're going to play golf tomorrow. They go, yeah. Well, how many times do you get to tee it up? Well, 18. I go, okay. So if you're practicing off a tee, at least 18 times you get to tee it up. If you hit those 18 pretty good, probably the rest of them, you might be okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so don't be afraid to tee it up because half the shots you're going to hit or, or, or a fourth of the shots you're going to hit are going to be off a of tee anyway. So why, are you, why don't you want to practice off a of tee? Yeah, let's start at least there. Start yeah. there. Everybody should start there. I really like that, Mike, for, for beginners. Drop the foot back and just run the face into the ball. What's the second thing you'd like to see people get into when they're first starting? Well, the first thing is understand the face. Right. Oh, sorry, the third thing. Yeah, right. Okay. The second thing, get your body out of the, don't, don't involve your body too much. So it's not only the, the foot's going back, but it's also most of the weight's on. on yeah. The, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're basically just sitting there and you're making a swing. And now your body's out of the way. It's going to pivot on your left hip. You're not worried about, all you're doing is creating some space and hitting it with your arms. Great. Now, you're, you think you're hitting it with your arms, but we watch you. There's a lot of body motion going on there. Yeah, it's just happening. Okay. Yeah. You, want to, you want to let it react naturally. So by dropping your foot back, you've naturally set the hip turning out of the way. It's just going to do it because mm -hmm. it's already there. So you don't have to stand there and figure out, okay, so how do I turn my hip and not sway and not do this and so then you get thinking about too many things yep so you basically created a base where now all you got to do is just swing your arms and run the club into the ball mm -hmm. the next thing is don't be in a big rush to see how far you can hit it okay it's all about you don't want to swing very hard you want to just hit it solid so if you went out and just hit it solid most of the time and in front of you I, how far it goes is not of any value See, control of the ball is more important than distance. We just saw that in the Ryder Cup. It's, it's, when people start out by trying to, how far can I hit it? Yeah. That assumes a high level of face control, which they don't have. So you get more frustrated. So you should say, how many times can I hit it in the face and get the ball in the air? If I, if I add more speed and I start missing the ball or not getting it in the air, you better back it back down. Mm -hmm because more speed is not going to make you better. Right. It's going to make you worse. So you have to be disciplined enough to come to this game and have your own self-discipline relative to speed. Other sports, tennis, baseball, skiing, either the speed of the ball coming at you or the severity of the sport force you to a pace you understand or you can't even participate or you get hurt. Right. See, golf allows yeah. people to go faster than they're capable of really handling. Yeah. And occasionally the club runs into the ball and they go, I got it. I go, well, you got lucky. Yeah. You can't duplicate that. Mm -hmm. So because there's not much penalty other than the ball goes crooked, people go way, way, way too fast, way too soon with no control of the face. Right. You get face control first, you're going to have fun with the game. If you don't develop that educated hands and face control, I don't care how much you play, you are going to reach a plateau where you will not get any better. Right. You will not. And all of the superstars are phenomenal with their hands controlling the face. Right. Regardless of what they tell you they're feeling, they're all really good because that's the first skill they learned. And if somebody's just starting golf, the first event they'll probably play in will be a scramble. Right. And if it's a scramble, you, you got to use your shot at least once right so let's uh, just pull a driver out quickly okay and uh so just so that uh, give us a good tip for a brand new player that wants to maybe it'll only be one in 14 times but wants to hit at least one solid good drive that is usable for their team okay first thing driver is a bad word because it connotates i'm going to hit it a long ways yeah so when people take this club out, the first thing, because they look at it and they want it to go far, all of a sudden they tighten and they tense up. That's not what you're trying to do with this. Yeah. So with that same setup and just swinging my arms and just running the club into the ball solidly. So my focus here is to run the club face into the ball solid. That's, I, I, I'm not how far I hit it. With just this much swing and running it into the ball solid, see that ball is going to go about... Well, that's going to go well over 200 yards. Yeah. So when you watch that, you're going, wait a minute. He didn't, he hardly turned it all. All he did was run it in. So all you're trying to do with this club is keep your tempo and just hit it mm -hmm. solid and actually feel like you're swinging slower with this. You really got, like you always say, the brain is a taskmaster, and you really got to put the task in your brain not to, to swing as fast, but what should the task be? Hit it Just solid. Hit it solid in the face. Just run the club mm -hmm. face into the ball solid. Mm -hmm. 
and, and, and keep the tension. Don't try to hit it far. Mm -hmm. You want to program your brain, I want to hit this ball solid. I'm trying to hit this ball solid, not how far am I going to try to yeah. hit it. As soon as you yeah. say, oh, I want this to go far, yeah. see, that's speed. Well, if you don't have the right setup, if your brain doesn't know how to create speed, mm -hmm. and it does it incorrectly, you're in trouble. Yeah. So speed or hit it far is a bad word. No, I want to I want to maintain my tempo and I want to just hit it solid in the middle of the face. Yep. I just want to hit it solid in the middle of the face. If I hit it solid, that was a great shot. I don't care where it goes. If you do that, you're going to hit two or three tee shots that are going to count. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you're probably going to be on a tee that's way up. And if you just hit it solid and it goes over 150 to 200 yards relative to the other guys, you're going to be out there almost 300 yards. And how do you prepare these new golfers for the comments that they'll get if they go out to the course and they've got and they're on almost one foot, really, just trying to run it into the ball? Like when are they when are they able to take a more regular stance or, or when did they know, like, OK, now I can start to. Take well, a regular stance. control of the ball starts to tell you when, so if you can make more and more swing and you can control it, then you can start letting your body do more. Yeah. What's really interesting, though, is if you watch a lot of the superstar tour players, a lot of them play from closed stances, and a lot of them, their right foot drags this way when they hit it. Mm -hmm. So what's happening there? Well, that foot drag and that foot back keeps their right hip out of the way makes room for their arms so even at the very highest level mm -hmm. you've got some superstar tour players that are playing from here and and actually if you watch the tour most of these guys if they're going to really hit one hard you watch them they'll drop their right foot back why because even at that level the tendency is to get tight and not get out of the way where your arms can go so they'll drop their foot back and that lets their hip get out of the way and it gives them room to get their arms coming into the ball correctly so don't be in a rush to go back to square and doing everything. Right, right. That isn't necessarily the magic bullet, and mm -hmm. that's not necessarily where we're all trying to go. You know, that's another bad misconception in this game is that this square stance, square, 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 okay. However, hardly any of the tour players play from square, everything. Yeah. So the best players in the world are a little open, they're a little closed, they're here, they're there. Well, why are we taking everybody and saying square? Uh, there's a reason, but initially, You've got to give your arms space right? so you can hit the ball mm -hmm. with no body motion at all and just yeah. this and just hitting yeah. it like that. Because at, at the level of play, player that, that our viewers are at for beginners, body effort and body speed can really just sabotage what you're trying to do with the face. Well, well because the more your body moves, the more what you're, what you're uh, assuming is that you have control of the face so the more your body moves your hands can make mm -hmm. the face show up yeah and most people don't so in any sport you you start with the smallest motions and you keep adding and adding and adding motion if you lose control you don't add more motion right you right. break it back down again so we want to use what we can that's the least amount of motion that creates the most potential distance with the least amount of timing as soon as you start adding weight shift and body turn and all that, you're assuming a level of control of that face that, that most people don't. So they get frustrated with the game early. I work with a lot of beginners and as soon as we stand them here and show them that baseball bat and tee a ball up and have them stand there and just go back and run the club face to the ball, all of a sudden they're hitting it right where they want it to go. And they go, well, that's good, but how do I make it go further? I said, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're not ready for far yet make a little more swing and see if you can still hit it and make it go where you want it to go. And all of a sudden we find a length of swing and a speed where they no longer have control. Back it off. Mm -hmm. Now if you, if you progress that way and your hands are on the club correctly, you're going to get pretty good pretty fast. If your hands are on the club incorrectly and you don't have any face control, I don't care how good this moves, you're never going to play very good. Okay, guys, you can learn, when you're ready for that next level, you can learn a lot more about it at MolaskaGolf.com. Molaska Golf. that's right, MolaskaGolf.com. A great resource with a whole bunch of videos there. And also, subscribe to Be Better Golf. Welcome to Golf. I think you're going to like the videos uh, on Be Better Golf. And also Mike's YouTube and website pages as well. Thanks for watching, everybody.